Hello all my buddies, this is Carmen and welcome to another Chatty Crochet With Me. <laughs> if this is your first Chatty Crochet With Me video, I'm just going to talk to you while I crochet, while you could crochet. And this is not a tutorial video at all, I'm not going to be teaching you anything. This is just a me and you conversation where it's mostly me talking. <laughs> um, and I crochet. So first, I'm going to share with you my progress. Um, so I'm actually still doing the March blanket. <laughs> I'm just finishing up. I'm just doing the border now so you can see. Um, just finishing up the border. So you can, uh, if you watched number 16, you can tell I slightly changed the colors. Um, and I frogged a couple times, so that's why I'm so late. It's April that I'm recording this. Obviously, there's been some, um, I'm a little late. So unlike my February blanket, which I frogged because of size, I actually frogged this because of color. So the colors here are Red Heart Super Saver, and then I've got Knit Picks Bravo Worsted In. This is Cornflower Free Freesia, uh, <laughs> Cornflower Alfalfa Freesia and Coral. And, um, my last video I actually had a an extra color which is tranquil which i will be using for my april um crochet blanket which will eventually happen but yeah so right after filming number 16 my last video i restart decided to restart and i actually did um uh all the colors including tranquil without the white which I think looked really muddy. It's actually like similar to this border, but like, you know, on a broader scale, I just didn't like that color combination. I think on this smaller scale, it looks rather nice, but I liked the white in between. I think it gave it a little bit of pop of color. Um, so ultimately I decided to take Tranquil out. Tranquil was a, um, I don't have it on me, but it was a, um, this is just like a sky blue kind of color and tranquil was like a blue green. But yeah, if you watch my next video, I'll show it off because I'll be using that for my next video. I mean, I'll be using that for my next blanket. So today I'll be working on the border. Um, it's just single crochet. Um, each of these is like two on this side, on the sides here, and then uh, three at the top. So the, I think the top looks obviously more even than the sides, but the sides don't look terrible. Um, they look fine. They're fine. But yeah, I'm over this blanket, you guys. This blanket is huge and it sucks working on it. It's like, it, it's starting to get warm again. So like sometimes when it's warm, it's like, I don't want to crochet this. It's very hot. So today's topic of conversation is going to be personality tests. So I love taking personality tests, even like the dumb, you know, like which Harry Potter character are you or which, you know, <laughs> like which Disney character would you date or would date you or whatever. So I love taking those. It doesn't matter which personality test, I will take one. <laughs> um, so I don't really care if they're not scientifically accurate or proven or whatever, they're just fun and that's why I like them. So I'm gonna be talking about the two most popular ones. Uh, the first one is called the Myers-Briggs test, um, which is the whole name is actually um, the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator, which is abbreviated MBTI. Um, and all my information I will link down below, but this most of it um, for the MBTI is from the MBTI uh, Wikipedia. And again, that's linked down below. So the MBTI actually has four parts um, that they focus on. So the first letter is actually E or I, which stands for extrovert or introvert. And most people know what that means by now, but extroverts uh, get their energy from socializing and they like working in groups, whereas introverts um, like being alone and get their energy from being alone and recharging that way. So part two, you have a second letter and that letter is going to be S or N. And S stands for sensor and N stands for intuitive. And this means um, how do you pay attention to details? Like what details do you pay attention to? 
a sensor's focus on the reality of the situation and um, the details of the situation, whereas intuitives focus more on the big picture of the situation and um, think of all the possibilities that could happen. So part three um, is either a T or a F. Those stands for how you make decisions. So do you make decisions um, by thinking or do you make decisions by feeling? So T is thinking, obviously. Thinking personalities are more level-headed and they value fairness and justice, whereas feeling personalities are more empathetic and they value harmony and forgiveness. So the last letter is going to be J or P, and that stands for how you prefer to live your daily life. And J means you're a judging personality, which means you like, um, which me means more like, are you a judge? So do you like a lot of rules or, and they have to be clear rules, or are you more a perceiving personality where, you know, like you'd rather have a lot of options um, and you're more spontaneous, um, more flexible. Um, I'd say, and judging is more strict. So also below, I linked a test that you can take for the, your MBTI. Um, obviously, take this with a grain of salt. Um, I don't prescribe like harshly to any of these, but I think they're fun, like I said. Uh, my favorite thing to do with MBTI is uh, uh, look up which characters I would be or that relate to me, and um, so, that's the only reason I ever took the MBTI test in the first place. Um, so I took the test a couple years ago and I got INFJ, so that's introvert, intuitive, feeling, and judging. I just took this test um, in preparation for this video and actually I got ISFJ, so it's either I'm in introverted, um, intuitive, feeling or judging or I'm introverted sensor feeling or judging and I honestly it's a flip of a coin um which day <laughs> it's a flip of a coin on the day which way I would go so like I said um like obviously I'm <laughs> definitely introverted um and sometimes and for the F I'm feeling so I definitely am way empathetic some days you know some days I just like cry commercials or I feel bad for people on TV um, and when it comes to my daily life I definitely like things more precise I have a clear routine that I follow every morning and every week and I like to plan things out by like time blocking if you watch my um, flip throughs you kind of guessed that but yeah on a daily life I rather have like strict you know lines <laughs> but um yeah between um sensor and intuitive I definitely fluctuate depending on the situation and the question I think sometimes I do try to focus on the reality of the situation and um you know like what's going on some days it's really like like especially at work it's like this is happening um this is what needs to happen right now and you know I don't really think big picture that way but sometimes in my personal life I do um take a look at the big picture like you know like long-term goals and stuff like that but mostly I feel like it is more day-to-day -day, like um I definitely focus like you know I just got to get this done instead of looking at the big picture um, most days. What I feel like I am, <laughs> I wish I were still INFJ because whenever I take that test and I Google what Harry Potter character I, uh, relates to me, INFJ is always Remus and I just like being associated with Remus. Remus was my favorite Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher um, and he's like you know he's just really cool he's just really cool you guys and I just like being associated with him um I I think ISFJ is um Neville which is also great I love being associated with Neville I just like Remus a little bit more 
So the next personality test that I really like and that's uh, pretty popular is called the Enneagram personality test, which I was actually introduced to by my friend Rebecca and her sisters. She, they he introduced this to me way back in, uh, I think it was, I think it was either late high school or early college. Um, but yeah, all my information today comes from either the Wikipedia or the Enneagram Institute, and I'll link both of those down below. So the Enneagram system, I don't know if I'm saying that right, but that's what it looks like it should be pronounced, um, is defined by nine personality types, and they're all indicated by a number, and each of those numbers is connected by lines on a circle, so it looks like the shape looks is, is called the Enneagram. Just like the MBTI, I don't, you know, like follow any of the teachings um, precisely. I just do this for fun. Um, this is just more disclaimer that I'm not trying to bring you into a cult. And I know that's what cults say because I'm listening to a podcast about Keith Raniere. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm not. Don't follow me. I don't want to be a leader. So also link below, I do have, I did find a quick Enneagram test for you. And I took this test recently and it was the same result that I got in college, but I'm type four. So uh, these are, I'll read to you some quotes from the Enneagram website, um, what four personality type means. Um, so we have named this type the individualist because fours maintain their identity by seeing themselves as fundamentally different from others. I have always liked to think that I am a little bit different than people. Um, I don't like being compared to anybody, period. Um, so yeah, I, I just don't like that. So it says they feel that they lack a clear and stable identity, particularly a social persona that they feel comfortable with. I think this really resonates with me as a Chinese American uh, because I'm sure as many um, children of immigrants feel you're not one or the other. You're too American for your parents' culture and your parents' culture may not make you American enough. Um, so that's, I really feel like I'm not home in either, um, area and, which is nice that, uh, <laughs> there's such a booming, you know, um, immigrant family, uh, culture online. <laughs> Fours begin to build their identity around how unlike everyone else they are. Uh, yeah, if you, like I said, before, if you compare me to anyone else, I don't like you. Um, I got compared a lot when I was younger to other classmates, to other family members. Um, really don't like that at all. I personally think that everyone is a, their own special snowflake, you know, like they're everyone is special in their own way. So like fundamentally, <laughs> I believe that about everybody, but especially about myself. <laughs> um, okay, one of the biggest challenges fours face is learning to let go of feelings from the past. They tend to nurse wounds and hold on to negative feelings about those who have hurt them. Yeah, I'm a huge grudge holder. Oh my god. Yeah, I. Yeah, I am not bragging about it. I'm just saying like. If I know you and you did something, you might not even know you did something, but I am holding a grudge against you, probably. I'm trying to let go. For real, I meditate on this for real, and it's really hard for me, you guys. It is really hard. I like to think of myself as more bohemian. And I also scored really high in nine, which is protector. I don't know about protector, but for real, like, um, I get a little possessive. Um, so I don't know if that's what that means, but it's something. Obviously, all in all, you should not listen to me at all. Go take the test, read up, and do your own research. Um, if you get sucked into it, please don't blame me. Um, I, like I said, I don't prescribe to any of these, uh, either the Enneagram or the MBTI teachings at all. I like looking up who I would be associated with in a 
fiction setting. So that's the only reason why I'm talking about these. I'm not trying to lead you into a cult. <laughs> all these personality tests are all fun and they're all made up. So, you know, like, go look up which Disney princess you would be. That being said, what are your personality types and your MBTI? And do you think about the results often? Because I don't think about the results often, like literally, before this, I didn't think about the MBTI at all, but I was on Instagram or Twitter and I saw a, I think it was like a trending topic or something where someone was like, look up four uh, characters that match your MBTI and use that to introduce yourself. And I was like, what is my MBTI? And I had to look it up. I did write it down from all those years ago. But the Enneagram, I remembered right away. Um, the Enneagram is actually, my four is my favorite number, which is taboo in Chinese culture, but um, it's my favorite number. I can't really help it. Uh, I love the number four, and um, I love that I am a number four. Yeah, but like I said, honestly, I just really like these for fun. Um, and let me know what your MBTI relates to in terms of a fictional fictional character because I really like being associated with Remus and um, Neville. I think it's really sweet. But yeah. So I think I finished one and a half edges of this blanket and I still have um, one more edge to do and then I gotta do the white. Um, border but then I'm done and then I'm gonna move on to April's blanket post haste because I'm very late it is mid April already so anyway thanks for watching everybody wish me luck on this blanket and let me know your personality types bye